remember when school was, well, school. We sat in our classrooms, pencil and paper on our desks with our teachers up at the blackboard. Traditional education is still very much alive and well, but a growing number of students are finding a new way to learn, and it all starts by logging on. Did you know that over 7 million people are taking at least one course online? That's right, the digital classroom is the next big thing. And today, it's our big conversation. Our first guest, Sal Khan, really got the ball rolling back in 2006 when he founded the Khan Academy. Well, if the image of Bricks, Ivy, and a bustling quad come to mind, you're on the wrong homepage because this academy is all online. And I must say, this school is really, really cool. So please welcome the founder of the Khan Academy, Sal Khan. <laughs> You know, I have wanted to interview Sal for quite a while, so I'm so pleased that you could be here today, Sal. No, it's an honor to be here. Thank well, so, so let's talk a little bit about you and, and your background. You grew up in Metairie, Louisiana. Tell us what your childhood was like and uh, what it was like growing up there. It was a fairly uh, normal, you know, uh, my mom raised us as a, as a single mother and, you know, she kind of had uh, odd jobs here and there, but, you know, I, my, my sister was a, a really strong student and so she kind of was a big role model for me, but yeah, it was, uh, went to Grace King High School and uh, it was overall a, a nice place to grow up. Meanwhile, you went on to MIT and then to Harvard Business School, right? And uh, obviously not very smart, poor Sal. <laughs> and uh, so, so what did you start doing after you graduated from uh, HBS, as they call it? Yeah, you know, my first career after undergrad was I worked in tech, but then um, I went back to business school. And after business school, I found myself, I was a, a, an analyst at an investment firm. And you probably thought you were going to stick with that. And then something happened. It was in uh, 2004, it was my cousin, Nadia. Uh, her and her family had visited up in Boston after uh, my wedding, uh, and uh, it just came out of conversation that she had just taken a placement exam after sixth grade. They were tracking her into the slower math track, and her mom didn't go to school in, in this country, so I don't think she fully appreciated what the implications might be for Nadia later on. And so uh, I asked Nadia, hey, what was the problem? It was unit conversion. And I said, hey, I think you can get this. How about I tutor you when you go back to New Orleans? We'll get on the phone and use the internet, whatever we can do. And then I started working with her younger brothers, and then word got around the family that free tutoring was happening. And so I found myself working with about 10, 15 cousins uh, every day after work, uh, on the phone, instant messenger, whatever else. And one friend said, hey, to help yourself scale up, why don't you record some of your lessons as videos and, and put them up on YouTube? And I immediately thought it was a horrible idea. I said, no, YouTube is for cats playing piano. It's not for... <laughs> Serious mathematics. Unit conversion. That's yeah. right. Uh, but I got over the idea that it wasn't my idea, and I, I gave it a shot. And um, yeah, long story short, those videos, my cousins, you know, they famously said that they liked me better on YouTube than in person. <laughs> and, um, and it took off from there in a very serious way. When did you realize, wow, this this could be a really big idea? Because here it went from helping Nadia with her math exam <laughs> to you know, being a huge, huge enterprise. I mean, did you have an aha moment, Sal, when you thought, wow, we could, this has scalability, as they say? Yeah, you know, I, I think it was in early 2007. Obviously, my cousins liked them, and I kept making more content. I saw the view count, and I, I saw it growing and growing. And then comments started to come in. And those first comments were just, you know, simple thank yous. And even that was a big deal. I don't know how much time you'll spend on YouTube. Most of the comments are not thank you. They are somewhat. <laughs> I, I somewhat, can attest yes, to that. Oh, yes, yeah. you probably. Yeah. Um, but then the comments got more intense. This is why I was able to pass algebra class. This is why after leaving the military, I'm able to re-engage and go back to college. I remember you know, in uh, mid-2007, I got this letter from a mother. And she said um, both of her sons had a learning disability. And this was the only thing that was allowing them to keep pace with their class. And you're like, wow, you know, just putting this stuff out there. And there's people all over the planet that are actually, their lives are being changed in some way. That was the moment, that there's, there's something here. And then the, the viewership just kept growing and growing and growing. And, and you know, by 2008, 2009, it's, it's kind of, it, it overtook my life. And, and in fact, you've got some pretty impressive supporters, one in particular named Bill Gates. And, and he got involved with, the, with uh, the Khan Academy early on, didn't he? Yeah, you know, in 2009, I quit my job. I set this up as a not-for-profit, hoping that you know, someone would notice, someone would support this. I think whenever you do anything like that, you start a little optimistic. And about nine months went by. No one really supported it. We we're living off of savings. 
And then um, in the summer of 2010, all of a sudden, one of the first early supporters sends me a text message. Her name is Ann Doerr, and she says, I'm at the Aspen Ideas Festival. Bill Gates is on stage, a last five minutes talking about Khan Academy. And so I was actually running a little summer camp with some middle school students, so I immediately boot the nearest seventh grader off of a computer. <laughs> and I start looking for some evidence of this thing. Uh -huh. And yeah, it was Bill Gates um, talking about, you know, Walter Isaacson, the head of the Aspen Institute, asking what he's excited about. He started talking about Khan Academy. And two weeks later, uh, yeah, I got a call from Seattle. It was Bill Gates' chief of staff, and he wanted to meet. And, and, and he has largely financed the Khan Academy? He has been one of, so uh, amongst others. Because uh, the classes are free. Yes, we're, we're not-for-profit, 501c3, uh, philanthropically supported. Uh, the Gates Foundation has been a major supporter. Google at the, around that same time reached out. Many other, the Broad Foundation, um, uh, you know, I could go on and on. There's been many, many people to help support the, the effort. And so what does it look like today? I mean, how many courses do you offer? How many teachers do you have? Yeah, so where it is now, there's... Um, there's 5,000 videos on Khan Academy, but at least in our mind, that's not even the meat of what it is. As soon as these other foundations reached out and said, what would you do? We said, well, videos are part of it, but we want an interactive platform. People should get unlimited practice, feedback, tools for teachers. Uh, so now we're a team of 60 people, and uh, we're reaching 10 million students every month. Wow. Um, uh, 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 <laughs> that's yeah. great. Oh, and, and how many different courses? It's, it, right now, it's pretty much every subject, especially in math, from kindergarten through early college, calculus, statistics, physics, chemistry, biology. We have a huge art history collection, uh, history. So our goal over time is to cover everything. But already in a lot of the math and science, we're, we're pretty, pretty comprehensive. That's amazing. And you don't want to replace the traditional classroom. You're really hoping to augment students' learning or give them an opportunity to learn something they might not have access to. No, that's right. And you know, out of the 10 million students who use this every month, um, one million are in formal classrooms. And, and the whole point here is I never imagined that this is somehow about, you know, people imagine online replacing physical. That's exactly not what we believe. We believe that uh, in a world where students have access to information at their own time and pace, they can get practice problems at their own time and pace, it allows the classroom to do richer things, to have conversations, do projects, do simulations. So the teachers, there's 300,000 teachers who use Khan Academy, and they've all tell, told us that it's, they, they, they feel liberated. They get to do more with their students. And every week we get letters from people all over the planet, and it's, yeah, it's what gets us up in the morning. It's sure exciting. beats working at a hedge fund, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah that was nice too, but it's better. <laughs> anyway, well, thank you, Sal.